Hi everyone, my name is Aditya and welcome to my Icker Talk. I'm going to talk about our paper titled Six Off Grasping for Target Driven Object Manipulation in Clutter. And this is joint work with my internship collaborators at NVIDIA. So let's get started. So, we humans, we are very good at grasping in clutter, but robots definitely have a long way to go in terms of catching up to our level of dexterity. And this problem of grasping in clutter has been studied before in the community, typically from a planning perspective. And unfortunately, it's hard to generalize these methods to unknown objects and environments because we typically end up making a lot of assumptions on the object pose and shape information and so on. And that's why in recent years, there's been a lot of interest in data-driven grasping. And the great thing is we can now generalize to unknown objects. But typically, um, the community is still f focused on bin picking or planar grasping, which is a constrained setup and, to, and just needs a 3 dof treatment of the problem. Recent approaches have extended this to 6 of grasp planning, which is more unconstrained, but just picking up individual objects. But overall, data-driven grasping doesn't really consider uh, collisions. What we have done in our approach is to essentially bridge the gap between both worlds, and we've presented a 6 of grasp generation approach for unknown objects in clutter. We also explicitly consider collisions in the grasp generation process. So for our approach, the task is to retrieve a specific target object um, in a cluttered scene with other uh, unknown objects. And we're going to use the 3D point cloud information to generate 6 off grasps and execute this on the robot without colliding with the scene. And our approach just needs a single view RGBD observation. And we also assume we have instant segmentation so that we can visually segment out the different objects in the scene. And let's say the task is to grasp the mustard bottle, which is the uh, object number 3 at the very back. So we can use the depth information to get the 3D point cloud. And as you can see, the point cloud isn't perfect. Um, it has a lot of holes, missing points due to occlusions. Another assumption is that during learning, we only focus on the collisions between the gripper and the seam. We don't really uh, consider the arm. And this worked pretty well for us in practice. And if necessary, we can also consider the arm uh, in our framework. So we're going to put a 3D bounding box centered on the target object. And this bounding box is approximately the size of the gripper. From this, we're going to get a cropped point cloud. And I'm going to call this uh, observation uh, X. And this is going to be an input to a lot of the modules going forward. And our goal here is to reconstruct this uh, distribution G star, which is the space of all successful grasps. And the grasp is defined in this space as a SE3 pulse of an open gripper, which when closing will stably lift the object. And I want to mention that uh, this distribution is extremely complex for cluttered scenes. It's discontinuous. It depends on both the geometry of the target object and the arrangement of objects in the scene. And to make this learning more tractable, we've essentially presented uh, our key contribution, which is a cascaded 6 off grass generation approach. And we have uh, factorized this into two steps. The first is object-centric grass sampling. And because we have instant segmentation, we can get the, uh, the point cloud corresponding to just the target object. The second step is clutter-centric evaluation with collision net. And we also show later that this cascaded approach and factorization definitely uh, works much better. So the first step is object-centric grass sampling. And if you recall, um, our, our goal is to extract this distribution of the space of successful grasps. And so we can use a generative model. And uh, we followed some prior work which proposed a conditional variational autoencoder. And you can read the uh, ICCV paper for more details. But essentially, uh, uh, the VAE uh, takes in the point cloud of the target object and a latent vector and produces a set of grasps. And we essentially learn a latent space for these grasps. And at test time, we only use the decoder of the VAE. We have a second uh, grasp evaluator, which is used to further rank and refine these grasps. At the end of the day, what you get is a, a set of uh, object-centric grasps that you see on the right. And since our um, uh, observations are all point clouds, we use PointNet++ as the underlying architecture for these modules. So um, this is followed by clutter-centric evaluation which, uh, with collision, which is our uh, second contribution. And uh, if you remember, we have a set of grasps of the target object. We're now going to consider this in the context of the full cluttered scene, which is uh, X, uh, as you see here. And collision net is essentially a classifier which predicts a collision score for each grasp. And on the right, you can see that um, the grasps are colored based on the score. Green means it's more collision-free. Red means it's more in collision. And the best way to grasp this mustard ball 
uh, is to essentially grasp from the top or from the right. And I want to emphasize that collision checking is typically done in simulation, where you know the full uh, pose and uh, shape of the objects. And here we want to generalize collision checking to just unknown objects and, and scenes. So essentially collision net is going to be conditioned just on the point cloud observation. All our training was in simulation from which we got object-centric grasps and we used about 125 uh, objects. And we also constructed uh, cluttered scenes in simulation from which we rendered uh, synthetic point clouds and collision labels to train our networks. And for our experiments, we first did uh, ablations in simulation because we can construct several cluttered scenes with uh, uh, different configurations of unknown objects. And we looked at two metrics. The first is success rate on the y-axis, uh, this is essentially precision, and coverage, which is on the x-axis, and this is uh, recall. And I want to emphasize that uh, a lot of prior work in grasping typically just look at the success rate. And the key result here is that our cascaded grasp generation approach, which is the green curve, uh, outperforms the single stage approach, which is the blue curve. The single stage approach uh, essentially does no factorization. It's just one uh, module predicting collision-free uh, successful grasps. And AUC here refers to the area under curve. The cascaded framework uh, also outperforms a instance agnostic method, which is the red curve. And this instance agnostic method essentially uses no instance segmentation. And this goes on to demonstrate uh, that instance segmentation is crucial for this problem of grasping and clutter. And we also compared collision net to a traditional voxel-based collision checking, uh, which is popular in the uh, community. And again, collision net outperforms its baseline. And here are some interesting uh, false positives from the voxel-based method. And if I could direct your attention to uh, some, some regions here where, because of occlusions, there's a lot of missing points. And we don't end up adding these as voxel uh, collision constraints. And because of this, um, you know, if you actually execute these graphs from the robot, it's going to collide into clutter. But CollisionNet is able to successfully detect this and um, uh, filter out these grasps. And the great thing is, even though we train only in simulation, we're able to transfer to the real robot and, and real point cloud data. And as you can see, we're not really doing planar grasps. We're doing six DOS grasps. And um, it's, for instance, it's going to grasp the mug by the handle. And overall, our, uh, our approach has a performance of 80% on multiple unknown objects in clutter. And it also outperforms uh, baseline approaches. Collision net also outperforms the uh, voxel-based uh, baseline approach in the robot experiments. So now I just want to illustrate a, a very interesting uh, application where let's say we specify uh, the object to grasp, but unfortunately it's not reachable initially. And most of the grasps will collide with the surrounding clutter. So now what we can do is we can use collision net and reason about uh, the blocking objects. And, and the way we're going to do this is, um, for all the objects in the scene, we're going to see how the collision net score increases before and after um, removing it from the scene. And uh, the increase in the score is essentially going to be uh, how the, the objects are going to be ranked. And the new goal is going to be to remove the object with the highest blocking score. And the robot is going to go in and remove this object. And once that happens, the original target object is going to be uh, unoccluded and visible and uh, it can be reached and it can, uh, the robot can finally uh, grasp this object. This is just an interesting um, edge case actually uh, where even though the object isn't initially graspable, we can still reason about moving out, uh, objects out of the way to grasp the target object. And in conclusion, um, we've proposed an approach for grasping unknown objects in clutter and specifically the contributions are a, a, it's a cascaded 6 stops grasp generation method and a learned collision checker collision net. And even though we only trained in simulation, we get a pretty competitive uh, performance in grasping novel objects in, in, on the real robot. And a key limitation of our approach is currently it's open loop. So um, in future work, we can definitely close the loop. And I think that will remove a lot of the failure modes. And we can also consider the robot trajectory during the grasp generation, uh, because currently we're just looking at the, uh, the gripper collision of the scene. And we can also use learned modules like collision net in task planning application. And I think this could open up a huge range of uh, possibilities in getting long horizon autonomy while working on real robots. And with that, uh, I've come to the end of the talk. And uh, thank you so much for your attention. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. Thank you.